Chop. Got Tucson. Uh, it's in this box. We're going to get it out of here. We'll take it apart, clean it up, run through it, do a little review. Let's take a look at it. So this, this is the TS-145 in D2 steel. And uh, in celebration of I got hooked up with White Mountain Knives for a 10% off code that I'll link down below. Um, I don't know. I just wanted my own, man. I'm doing these reviews. I get mine too, right? So there's one down there that you can you can click the link. I don't get anything from it. I just I request it. They give it to me. So if you put my code in, you'll get 10% off. Well, in celebration of that, I had this knife sitting in my pile of two sons that I need to check in and review if I'm going to review them or not. Cause I don't review them all. Um, it may seem like that, but, but I don't, I man, a lot of these, I just take them out of the box, put them in my hand. I clean them up. I mess with them. And I, you know, I, I put them in a case and when I get a chance, I take them out and carry them. But, um, anyways, this one was sitting in that pile. It needed to be checked in. I've had it for, I don't know. It's been sitting in that pile maybe a month. And uh, I recently requested my 10% off code. So they gave it to me today. And so I thought, man, I'm going to go ahead and dig that knife out and review it. So there it is. The TS-145 in D2. So we'll clean it up. I'll take it apart. We'll run it through its paces. We'll check it in so we can check it out. And yeah. There we go. So I think I'm going to get that initial wipe down. Try to get as much of this oil off of here as I can. So they even come from White Mountain coated in oil. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they don't unbox these. Um, yeah. Okay. Initially. So, I, you know, I got to say that that visually, this knife does it for me. That sheep's foot and, you know, the fuller, uh, the micarta, kind of boxed in there, inset. I, I, I dig it, man. I, there's something about it. I like the little scallops along here, scallops in the backspacer. So this was a visual purchase for me. I don't, I don't remember where I saw it. I might have saw it on AliExpress or something. And so when I did, I went looking for it and I found it on White Mountain Knives. So uh pulled the trigger on it. Anyways, let's get it apart and then we'll run it. Yeah, hold on. Let me open it. You gotta be dramatic about it. Whew. Sort of weak detent going there. Yeah, definitely. Let's try a thumb. The thumb's a little more authoritative for me. I did notice that this front flipper tab, it can contact you here. Ooh. Yeah. Soft detent. But the front flipper tab just couldn't be easier. That's for sure. Um, wouldn't hurt my feelings to have the detent on this just a pinch tighter but I do believe yeah almost like drop shut you know yeah very smooth mechanical I'm not sure that I can improve on that let me check yeah just rock solid super nice well let's take it apart and then we'll we'll check that action again Ooh, that was super loose yeah I don't know if that's going to need Loctite, but it was loose. Probably going to fall out of there. That's loose. That's loose. Ooh. I don't know if the, somebody had the knife apart or if it missed uh, final inspection. But yeah, all them screws were, were very, very, very loose. Okay. I mean, a little bit of dirt under the backspacer, kind of just oily. Definitely some dirt in here under this backspacer, or dirty oil, I don't know. But nice, that's kind of got some heft to it, that's not light. 
Huh. Yeah, the blades definitely got some dirt in there. It's got the racetrack washer, standard cage bearing. Yeah, I mean, it's dirty, so I'm glad I got it apart. Definitely needs a cleanup. Um, I don't see any relief. Well, there's some relief going to that micarta, but I'm going to leave it. Well, and I don't even see any screws holding it on. This one's got a couple of screws. This side, no screws. So I'm going to say that it's, it's glued in there. So I'm not even going to attempt to take it out. Yep. This side's got some screws holding it in. Um, maybe because it acts as that travel stop. So if you had to take that out to adjust this uh, this uh, lock bar, um, you could do that because you couldn't make it weaker unless you remove this. This side, glued. All right, let's wipe it down. I don't want to loosen the detent. I might, I might try to, I might try to put some uh, some strength into it because it was kind of weak. Mm. Nice titanium scales. They're not weight relieved, um, with the exception of the uh, the micarta is recessed. I wonder what's going on under that collar. It's titanium, so my magnet's not going to work on it. There we go. A little bit of oil. That famous Yang Jane China logo. It's famous throughout the world. Renowned for irritating people. I'm going to, you know what, I think I'm going to, I shouldn't even do this, it's like I'm antagonistic, I should probably relax, man, like, what's my problem, but I think I'm going to get a t-shirt, I don't know, they'd probably get me for logo infringement or something, maybe not, but I, I want a t-shirt with that on it, Tucson, and then uh, Tucson Knives made in Yangjiang, China, come on, come on, Tucson, get me a t-shirt, man, I'll wear it. That's awesome. I, I, why am I going there? I don't know. I guess I just think it's kind of silly. But, teach his own, man. But if, if hey, if y'all send me a t-shirt, I'll wear it. 100%. Give me a, give me a 2XL. I can wear an XL, uh, but 2XL is more comfortable. And then if it shrinks... I don't have to worry about it. Because if I get an XL t-shirt and it shrinks, then it don't fit well. It's because I'm so muscular. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I guess at some point I'll, I'll have to do a video and, like, reveal the truth on that. It's like, bro, I thought you said you were muscular. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, I can pick up a sack of potatoes. You know what I mean? I don't think I'm light in the pants or nothing like that. But, yeah. Okay. We are clean and ready to reassemble. Start with that cage pivot pin on this side. And those two... Spacers. Get all that in. We'll lay that down. A little drop will do you. This little thing on a back spacer. What's that? The lanyard hole? I'm assuming that's kind of what that is. I've seen a couple of knives with that recently. And uh, 
I don't know. I guess you either hate, you love it or you hate it. I, I say that, but I kind of don't care. I mean, it's a feature of the knife. It doesn't really catch my eye one way or the other, I guess. But I, I could see, I could be sy sympathetic to the fact that you could not like it. It's kind of an odd little... You know, they could have just as easily put a hole back here in the frame than adding that. I don't, you know, I don't know. Maybe it's a thing, because I have seen it a couple of times now. All right. And it almost just don't get any easier than that right there. Simple. Get these tight, and I'll go back to that pivot. I didn't, I don't overly tighten that pivot when I get going like that. I just want it to kind of hold everything in place, and uh, and then I really kind of come back and torque up any frame screws, and that way that pivot screw can balance those towards the pivot. Um, I don't know if that's scientifically proven as a way to do it. Oh, even the pocket clip was loose. How about it? I don't know. I may have to pay attention to that. Maybe come back and Loctite them. I just think they were loose. But let me check that pivot. Okay. I mean... Absolutely no play in there. It's got some resistance, so maybe I'll loosen that up a little bit. Yeah, it's dropping better there. Yeah, no play in there. It's just, boy, it's just one of those. It's going to take some, uh, it's going to take Loctite because... There's just no, there's no uh, back pressure on that screw whatsoever. So I'll just put a little bit and threads here. All right, make a mess. There we go. More than a little bit. Nice. Let me check these again. Okay. So, back together. That that action, I mean, the detent's just a little light, which is an easy fix, but I think I'd rather work the knife before I go. It's not light enough that it's forcing me to uh, tune that yet. The front flipper, you know, that, that front flipper right there works really well. I don't have any issues there. Um, it's catching a detent and popping it out of there. Um, the thumb flick, again, equally snappy coming out of there with that thumb flick. I tend to have more authority with a thumb flick than I do with anything else. But, but yeah, no problems there. And then that uh, spidey flick, it, you know, it's, it's functioning. Yeah, so the action's good. The way it drops the lock bar, um, good access. This is lowered. They're both scalloped, but coming in from with the right hand grip, easy to grab this. Um, not unusual pressure to get it. The lockup's a little light at maybe 20%. I mean, when it's that light, I'm going to check just to see. Yeah, see, it failed right there. So I am uh, I am going to adjust that, that detent. And, uh, you know, if it was me, I'd want to see it. So, yeah, make the video longer. I, hey, I didn't plan it. I mean, I think maybe sometimes with my videos... It may seem like I'm planning this stuff, but I don't. I mean, I just, I just took it apart, and 
as soon as I checked it, as soon as I checked that action, I was like, yeah, that detent's kind of weak. And now uh, it's so weak that the lockup is failing. Now, I, hey, some would argue that failing the lockup by whacking it uh, isn't a good way to test it. And of course, when I when I hear that criticism, it's from the manufacturers. Manufacturers say, well, if you smack it like that, that's not how you test that. But if you talk to a knife guy, like every knife guy that I've talked to, now I haven't talked to a lot. I mean, who am I? I mean, I ain't nobody and I'm stupid, but the knife guys that I do talk to, you know, and, and if you ask me, I, you know, if I, if I just whack it on the table like that, I didn't hit it hard. I didn't come down with force. I wasn't trying to break anything. But if I tap it on the back of the blade and it comes off, that's a problem. It's not adjusted properly. So I'm going to get my bearings here. I'm pretty much the outsides lined up with that inside edge. So I'm going to put a gap on that of maybe a sixteenth of an inch. And all that is is just applying pressure. And so I've got maybe a thirty-second of an inch. I think I'm going to get just a little bit more because I'm lazy and I don't want to open this knife again. Yeah, so I'm every bit of a sixteenth of an inch now. So I might have went too far, but all that means is that I'll have to come back in again and you can go get a snack or something. I don't know. You know, get a snack, come back. Maybe I'll have it figured out. All right, let's get back together. Yeah, I mean... I don't test them all, but if I've got a weak detent, I'm, man, I'll tap it. I'm checking it. Um, but I've had manufacturers, I've, I've reached out and they're like, well, did you, how do you know? Did you tap it? Yeah. Well, don't do that. Oh, okay. They say, well, I mean, if you can't break it with hand pressure, yeah, I mean, I don't know. How does that compare to I'm using the knife and then you know, for whatever reason, I, you know, I don't know. And then I, that breaks. Well, then what? I mean, am I, I'm cut. So it seems like a reasonable test to me. I don't know. But I can tell you when I got a weak detent, I can tap it on a towel like that on the table and it come free. Yeah. Something, something's got to give man. And I don't want it to be my fingers. All right, I know I put that way too tight. That was not that tight. It pretty much made contact and was good to go. All right, way stronger. Yeah, 100%. The lockup's not any better, though. Yeah, the lockup. So that comes down to the back of this blade was ground short or long. Or the steel lock bar insert is long. But, yeah, it that didn't improve that at all. But it may have, yeah, definitely improved that detent. Um, it's a little more difficult to press over now. I can feel the resistance better. Um, it's definitely better there. But let's, uh, let's check that. Let's check that lock again. Whoop. All right, make sure that my hand's safe so I don't cut myself. All right, so it it didn't fail, but, whoo, I mean, it's not much, man. You know, 20%, but it didn't fail this time, so it's got enough tension. So I, I'm good with it. I mean, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to go tomorrow and put this knife to work, you know, where I need to worry about that, but, I, you know, I don't even know why I said that because I'll be honest. If I can't get that to be sufficient to where I could put it in my pocket and count on it, then I don't know. As far as I'm concerned, I, you know, I, I wouldn't throw the knife away because potentially I'd pull it out and fix it like I could do other things. But 
but it's a worthless knife to me at that point. It's just absolutely worthless. I would never carry it. I'd never put it in my pocket. So, uh, and I recommend you don't either. I mean, why would you, just because it's nice or whatever, the lock doesn't function well, you know, like I've had it happen. Somebody go, hey, and I go, oh, that's cool. Let me check that out. And then they go, hey, yeah, so that, that doesn't work right. It's like, well, why you got it in your pocket, man? I mean, so that's not me. If it's not right, I can't put it in my pocket, but that's holding now. So I'm okay with that. Um, the act, the detent's definitely better. So it needed it anyways. And through time, that will improve just the nature of it. Through time, it'll it'll get better. Let's see how it cuts. All right. Should cut well, considering that sheep foot. I mean, it's pretty out of the box sharp, but it needs to be stropped. Where are we at on time? We're at 20 minutes, so, I mean, what's another 10 seconds? I'm going to strop it and see if I can't. Fix that burr. It's a hundred percent got a burr on it. Because I, I can feel it going through the material, through the paper, it's catching on a burr. So I don't need to do anything crazy on it, but just a couple of passes on a strop. And I either made it better or I made it worse. The knife, uh, at this point, the knife's kind of been a challenge. But, I, you know, I don't know. It's a good illustration of sometimes, you know, sometimes you just don't clean them and put them into service. you you got to take care of a few things. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely better. Yeah, 100% better. With this knife, I mean, with that lock, and if I want to put this one in my pocket, I, I may do a real good strop on it, or I may actually reprofile this. Um, just because, okay, hold on. Yeah, so, all right, let's go through some of this. I mean, it's it's a D2, it's a TS-145 with D2 steel. It's got uh, titanium scales with uh, micarta inlays. Um, we'll check that pocket clip in a second. It's got a hollow ground sheep's foot blade. And so I was just talking about how I, if I was going to carry this, which I like it. I mean, overall, just the look of this knife, I do like this knife. And so putting this in my pocket is a real option. I'll probably reprofile this blade just to get it right. Because, I mean, a little bit of time, I could spend maybe 20 minutes or so on this and make it phenomenal. So it's not bad, it cuts, but I mean, it could be better for sure. So yeah, maybe a reprofiling is in the future. Um, grip, yeah, it's got a good strong grip, really good strong grip. The uh, jimping here locks the thumb in pretty good. It's got a forward uh, choil for um, front grip to, you know, that works. It's a good grip there, nice and strong. Definitely a strong grip back here. Um, no real hot spots. I can feel this pocket clip up in the back of my palm here, but not bad. Um, full four-finger grip. This rest back here. It's got a full spacer. Yeah, nice. All right, so uh, let's check that pocket clip real quick. Okay, so it it's definitely two hands in the pocket, and the reason is is because the amount of tension, and I'm thinking the flat space of that against the micarta, it it's grippy. It's not that it's hanging up, it's just grippy. So, um, I mean, overall it's okay. It's just, it is a really secure grip in a pocket. Um, yeah, so price and availability. Um, I bought this on White Mountain Knives 
it's still available there for, uh, I believe it's just over a hundred dollars, but with a 10% discount, you can get it for just under a hundred dollars, right around $90, so like 95 bucks. So, um, I do like it. I'm definitely going to give it some pocket time. Um, uh, and I think for sure I'm going to reprofile this. Yeah. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video and then I'm going to reprofile it and I will add like just 10 seconds of the view of the new profile blade. Okay, back. Let me, uh, let me wipe it off. Um, I do find that, uh, D2 responds to a leather strop where others don't. So I did run through belts and then I leather stropped it. And so this is sharp now to where I'm comfortable with putting that in my pocket. So it's not, not a perfectly polished edge, but I mean, all in all, I, I probably put 15 minutes in it. I did have to go fairly aggressive to get that original profile. But once I got a burr up, um, then it's just a couple of passes on each progressive belt to, uh, to, uh, fine tune it, continue to take that burr off. Yeah. Pretty happy with that now. So let me let let me wrap up with this knife. I mean, sharp sharpening notwithstanding, um, I do want to carry this knife. I like the shape of it. I like the look of it. I like the way it feels in my hand. Um, it's not super heavy. I'm gonna say four ounces, somewhere maybe four and a half. You know, right in that area, four four point five somewhere in there. I'm going to say definitely under five ounces, um, and it feels really good. Like this is something that I could easily get in my pocket. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let that that Loctite sit um, for a day, and then I'm going to check it for tightness to see if it's if it's bunched up in there. If it is, then I'm going to throw this thing in my pocket and uh, let it run around with me. It has just on aesthetics, I guess in in grip and feel alone, this thing has earned a ride in my pocket. Um, yeah, so anyways, Tucson TS-145 in D2, uh, readily available. I believe it's a night morning design. Yeah, it's got his logo. I believe it's readily available on White Mountain Knives for about $95 with the discount code. So, appreciate you watching. And of course, the video got long again, didn't it? Thanks. See ya.